Hi folks, welcome to another tutorial on reporting student learning and achievement with the new curriculum for Edmonton Catholic Schools. In today's video, we will learn about what learner skills are, why they are back, and how to make sure they are taught, assessed, and reported on for the January and June reports. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, teachers in Edmonton Catholic Schools assessed and reported on what we call learner skills. But what are these skills? Why do we have them? What does this mean for us as classroom teachers? Learner skills transcend subject area and content. These are the skills that are vital to success in school and beyond. The three areas of learner skills are citizenship, collaboration, and self-management. Let's look at each one in turn. Citizenship is how the student is an individual member of our Catholic school community. Under this domain, there are six specific outcomes you may choose from to represent a student's citizenship skills. They are, the student is considerate and polite, accepts responsibility for own actions, responds to others in a respectful manner, respects property of others, shares ideas and takes action to make the class or school a safe and just place and plays well in small and large groups. The second domain is collaboration or how the student is a contributing group member working towards collaborative learning goals. There are four specific outcomes you can use to represent collaboration skills. The student shares learning resources and prior knowledge responds positively to the ideas and opinions of others, assumes shared responsibility for group work, and works with others to resolve challenges related to small group learning goals. The third domain is self-management, or how the student as an individual takes responsibility for their personal learning strategies. There are eight specific outcomes you can use to represent the self-management domain. The student takes responsibility for personal goals, remains focused and on task, perseveres when responding to learning challenges, seeks clarification and assistance when needed, organizes personal learning materials and space, follows classroom rules and routines, listens attentively during instruction and classroom discussions, and takes initiative to extend learning. Teachers can decide collaboratively how many learner skill outcomes will be represented on each report card. Just keep in mind that the June report card is cumulative for the entire school year. Most teachers choose between four and seven per term. Please note that these should be chosen intentionally. Not every student needs to be assessed on every learner skill outcome in the year. This is where we can truly make learning personalized. Teachers are encouraged to define with their classes what each dimension of learner skills looks like so they can set goals and self-monitor. Learner skills are assessed with the following indicators, requires growth, shows progress, and shows consistently. And these will be entered into PowerTeacher Pro so that they can appear on the summary report in January and on the final report card in June. When it comes to entering assessment information about learner skills, we can use PowerTeacher Pro in exactly the same way we would when we make an assignment in PowerTeacher Pro, or we can simply go to the outcomes progress page for each student. Let's take a look at how this can be done. There are a few ways that you can report learner skills in PowerTeacher Pro so that they appear on the January and June reports. The first way is to treat learner skills just like you would the outcomes in any other course. So you can create an assignment, assign all students to it, and you can put in their learner skills levels here. So we see shows consistently, shows progress and requires growth. You may also include an anecdotal note here as this is your grade book. Another option is to create assignments according to student goals. For instance, our self-management assignment for quarter one is something that Albert, Marie, and Rosalind 
are working on. So they're working on remaining focused and on task, organizes their personal learning materials and takes the initiative. So I can put in shows progress, requires growth or whatever it might be as appropriate for each student. So finally, if I didn't want to do it like an assignment in PowerTeacher Pro, I could just come to students and click on outcomes progress. And that will take me to the list of all of the learner skills outcomes for this particular student. And then I can input a level uh, of learner skill um, separate from an assignment altogether. So here we can see uh, that Albert got a requires growth for one assignment. Here we can see that Albert got a shows consistently, but there's no assignments here. And this is how I know, looking at this little triangle here, and that there's a zero here, this is how I know that this has just been put in from this screen as opposed to in, um, in an assignment. Most schools hold their demonstrations of learning in November. Then we have the January summary report. Then the second demonstration of learning is sometime at the end of March or beginning of April. And then we have the final report card in June. Let's consider three questions as we prepare students for these skills that will help them find success in our classrooms and beyond. Number one, how can I explicitly teach these skills, provide opportunities to practice, and provide ongoing feedback to students as they develop these skills? Number two, how can I use assessment as and for learning to help our students develop these skills? And finally, number three, in what ways will I document and communicate student progress with learner skills, both as a part of these formal reporting periods throughout the year and as needed during the learning? That's it for today, everyone. If you have any questions at all, please visit our SharePoint site or call your assessment and reporting consultant at Learning Services. I'm Jennifer saying thanks for watching and have a great day.